Hello, Empowered Woman. Welcome to this episode of the Empowered Woman Podcast. Today, I had the pleasure of interviewing someone who's made a huge impact on my coaching journey. I talked to Joshua Church, Director of Operations at High Impact Coaching, who's helped the founder scale to multiple seven figures and a team of 20 in less than four years. He's also an avid photographer, writer, storyteller, and a passionately curious student of life. We had an amazing conversation about work and play and living life to its fullest, doing what you love. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Empowered Woman Podcast, the number one show on personal growth, visibility, and profit for women entrepreneurs. If you're wanting to start believing in yourself, giving yourself permission to succeed, and let your voice be heard to make an impact in the world as an entrepreneur, this is the place for you. I am so glad that you're here. My name is Marta Spurk, and I'm your host, triplet mom, woman empowerment coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. Welcome again, and let's dive into today's episode. Hi, Joshua. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thanks. It's a pleasure. Happy to be here. Yeah, so excited. So as usual, I I start with a little backstory of how I met my guest. And we were just saying how it's been three years since we first connected. And that is pretty crazy. Time does go by fast, especially as you get older. Uh, But you were, in many ways, um, the reason why I kept on going in this crazy coaching journey. Um, you were the very person that I actually, I think the very time, very first time I was on a sales call with somebody was with you. So you should feel privileged. (laughs) That's awesome. And, uh, so, and it was my very first high ticket program that I was a part of as well with high impact coaching. And I talk about the program all of the time. Um, I've uh, talked about it when I interviewed Miles Stutes here on the show, Mm because, uh, I met him through the program as well. And I am just super, super grateful for your guidance and just for your leadership, to be honest, because um, I just feel like it it really jived with me how you have such a nurturing personality, but you also have, you know, the strategy and all of that. And it really came through. I think we had maybe two or three calls um, Mm -hmm. in between, you know, me deciding and coming up with the money and all that good stuff (laughs) that we know about. And uh, recently we sort of reconnected on Instagram. Yeah. Just, your stuff started popping up more for me. And I saw that you launched a podcast and I was like, you know what? I want to interview Joshua. I want to reconnect. I want to see what he's up to and introduce him to my community. So here you are. Tell us who you are and what you do. I love it. Thank you. And thank you for those words. It's very, it's very cool to see. And, and that's a big reason why we get into the coaching space is to, mm-hmm. is for the, the ripple effect and the tangible impact and also to see at how it carries um, over years, especially like you don't know the kind of impact that you're having on someone until yeah time happens yes. and then you see how one thing you might have said led to something else or once the dots start connecting it becomes a really yeah. beautiful experience so thank you for, for sharing that it's, uh, it's an honor uh yeah i'm joshua um it's a character that i play in this life um it's a fun one i have a lot of fun with this character um i'm director of operations for a company called high impact coaching which you referenced helping beginning coaches build and scale their their coaching business uh, but I, I really take that director of operations role in, in many different areas. And I like to consider myself as like an operations specialist because I'm really fascinated by not only the operations of what goes into building a business, like the back end, the systems, processes, procedures, people that allow you to actually grow and scale and be successful, but the operations of how we work our own human machines that we're in, right? Our mind, our body, mm-hmm. the hardware, software we're running, like what are the different belief systems? Yeah. What are the systems for living that we have? And that's always fascinated me. So that was a big impetus for me starting the podcast, which I host called Find the Others, all about just understanding other people's mode of operating, how people navigate the world. Like it's always been fascinating to me to see how we're all given the same 24 hours in a day, yet some people are like tremendously, they go about their days completely different. There's mm-hmm. people that are varying levels of success across the across the world, across different income opportunities, across different backgrounds, ethnicities, like you see success all across the board. It's, yeah. it's, there's no, there's no exception to it. And I'm always fascinated. Like what, what makes that person different than this person? And it, it's really just how we're operating. So I'm, I'm an operations nerd and specialist when it comes to that, of how we <laughs> can, that. how we can really, uh, yeah, how we can really operate to a, a more fulfilling life. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that so much. And I think one of the reasons why I've been so drawn to you is really the whole mindset piece. Cause that is something that you really helped in the program, everyone through it. And I 
especially me, <laughs> uh, with, you know, the thought patterns and, you know, how you feel about yourself. And one of the things that has really caught my attention, you know, just going through your content on Instagram and learning a little bit more about you is how you enjoy the outdoors and the adventures and uh, challenging yourself physically. And I know that that has a lot to do with the mindset piece as well. So I'd love for you to share a little bit more about your experiences. And you also take some beautiful pictures as well. Thank you. Yeah. You're just, just do amazing things across the board. So I'd love to hear a little bit more on that because you've gotten to do some pretty amazing things. Yeah, no, I mean, I, it seems kind of weird, but you know, I'm in my, I'm in my late twenties, but like, I honestly feel like if tomorrow my time was up and I was time to go and transition on to whatever's after this life, like I'd be okay with that. And that might sound weird or crazy. And I know that there's still a lot of life here for me to live here, but um, but I, I've been so fortunate and grateful to just like soak so much out of the the years that I have been alive here that um, that really bring me to that content feeling. Um, so I've had some, I mean, just pinch me moments, amazing opportunity. And that's a big gift that my parents gave me when I was younger and my siblings, the gift of, of travel and experiencing the world, uh, which I'm very fortunate to have. And then I just kind of took that and that became just part of how I wanted to experience the world. Like mm -hmm. I, I could spend my entire life traveling and still not get to every place that I want right. to. And, and that's kind of like daunting, but it's also inspiring to me that there's so much beauty and there's so much to, so much to explore. And so for me, I, I take that mindset component to the exploration as well, because if we want to know how we actually operate, we want to learn more about ourselves. The best way to do that is to put, is to like take ourselves mm -hmm. and drop us out of our day to day yeah. and into a chaotic environment into some different function, into some discomfort or uncomfortability. And that, and those challenges are really where you see, you get to learn a real, a lot about yourself. It's like yeah. holding a mirror up to yourself when you're climbing a mountain or you're doing a triathlon, whatever it might be, whatever challenge that you're choosing, or you're in a country where nobody speaks the language that you right. speak and you're trying to figure out how to, how to get around. It forces you to really look at how you operate and, and it, and it invites you to learn a lot more about, how other people operate too, because we get yeah. fixed into thinking like, oh yeah, this is, this is the way things are in our society. But there's other societies that think what we do is completely crazy and backwards. So it's, it's interesting to kind of get out of that shell as well and to be able to see, okay, what are there's, well, how are there different ways of thinking about operating? How are there different ways? Like what are other people doing and what can I learn about myself through this process? Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. And I, I want to hear about some experiences though, because I know you've done some cool yeah. stuff and I think just talking about it will make people be like, all right, I guess you know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I, I kind of have these, um, what I call these zoom out moments. Um, and I'll share a few of them that are like top of mind, but okay. uh, the zoom out moments are the moments where you're just like, you just have to, you get hit with like a moment of like, hold up, what am I doing right now? It's like zoom out, like zoom out and look at yourself as like a little blue dot. You know, when you pull up maps and you see the yep. little blue dot of where you're at. I have, I take screenshots all the time and I have those zoom out moments of like, what am I doing right now? So one that comes to mind a couple of years ago was in, um, I was traveling after climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. Uh, we went over into Rwanda and Uganda after. And in um, Uganda, we traveled into the Bowindi impenetrable forest. And we did a, uh, we were trekking to go find this, to trek this wild pack of gorillas. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's, um, it's a very unique thing to be able to do. And we have to have like permits to be in the actual national park. Wow to go do this. And we were track, we, we were trekking literally for eight hours, wow. miles and miles and miles. We're climbing like literally with a machete paving the jungle path. We're in mud up to our knees. And then all of a sudden we like see the branches moving in the distance and we come face to face with these wild mountain gorillas. And we're able to spend an hour sitting there taking photographs and just observing and being a part of that. Um, and, and that was one of those moments when I'm like, I'm swinging a machete and I'm like, I'm covered in mud head to toe and I'm sweating, there's mosquitoes buzzing everywhere. And it's one of those moments where you just zoom out. I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, where am I? Like, if I think about where I'm in the world right now, what am I doing on a Tuesday afternoon? Like, this is insane. And it leads me, those moments lead me to, to awe, to gratitude, which, which as science shows, connects different parts of your brain uh, that physiologically have an impact on your health, on your well-being, that have an impact on, on your, 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 your life. So that's one example, uh, seeing the Northern Lights in Iceland, um, doing a Wim Hof retreat as I'm outside, you know, in freezing temperatures, doing cold dips in the middle of the night, looking up to see the stars in the Milky Way, just feeling so connected to the land and, and to, to this mesmerizing experience. That's, a, that's, that's certainly another one. Um, in Southeast Asia, traveling, getting bit by a monkey. In, oh um, I was in Bali. I got bit by a monkey. So I had to get a rabies shot 
but I was traveling to Vietnam the next day. So I went to Vietnam. I had to go to a hospital in Vietnam and get a rabies shot from a, 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 a old hospital in Vietnam. It just was like a complete trip. So that was another like, wait, what am I doing right now? Where has life led me? So those are some of the few kind of beautiful like zoom out moments that, uh, that I'm always mindful and, and appreciative of. I love that so much. And I love that you incorporate that into your life and that you showcased and, sh- and shared that because I think especially for us working in this online coaching space, it can be very like alienating and yeah. that's all you live. That's all you think about. And uh, you forget that there's a whole life out there and that you're helping people grow and whatever in whatever capacity and industry that you're in and you're making money. But why are you doing that? Mm. You know, what are you trying to create for yourself? What are you, you know, and with just what you said, it may sound bizarre to say that if I were to go tomorrow, that I'd be okay with that. But isn't that what we should all be of sorts thinking, you know, what have I done up until this point? And with you not even being in your thirties yet to be able to say that it really goes to show that all the things that you have been, um, applying to your life and teaching others through coaching is so real because you're making yeah. the most out of your life. You're tapping into gratitude, which is what we, we need to be doing to keep growing in our business and as people too. So I love that. So uh, absolutely. It reminds me um, uh, of this quote that I have happened to have pulled up right here on my computer um, that I want to share. It's from Lawrence Pearsall Jacks. He says, a master in the art of living draws no sharp distinction between his work and his play mm-hmm his labor and leisure, his mind and his body, his education and his recreation. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence through whatever he's doing and leaves others to determine whether he's working or playing. Mm -hmm. To himself, he always appears to be doing both. Wow, that gave me chills. That's the goal. That should be the goal. It's not the money. It's not the validation, the recognition. It really is to creating a life that you love. And it's, it's like a combination I find of, of the both. And I, yeah. you know, and, and this to me is like, this is the operating system that I strive to constantly mm-hmm. operate under and constantly give myself different various upgrades, software upgrades and yes. um, new updates to be operating on this level of, but I've, I've experienced a lot personally in my life where I've, where I've gone, I was working in a startup company and I was just like going down that chase, the like go, go, go. And maybe we'll get to a place where you can IPO one day in the future and the money's not going to be an issue. But right now, just like, it's going to suck and got to embrace the grind and like, just no contentment in the actual moment, just focus on the future vision. And then on the other hand, I like, I quit my job and traveled and, you know, with no agenda backpack through Southeast Asia and, and through the rest of the world. And, and I've been on that, like, you know, that blissful, it doesn't matter what tomorrow brings. Like I'm so happy here and now. And, and those are, those are both fleeting. And I've taken those to the extreme personally. And I found that the, the real sustainable fulfillment and drive comes from the combination of both. Yeah. It's like, they're two sides of the same coin really. But what it comes from is it comes from this pursuit of work and of play. It comes from contentment in the fur in, in the present moment, but never being satisfied and always yeah. striving for more and working towards things that inspire you and that are bigger than yourself and pull you forward. That combination is what allows me to to, to feel that way and to, to feel like I'm working on things that matter and I'm having fun along the way. And the more fun I seem to have, the easier things seem to go and the closer I get towards the future vision. So it's kind of the paradox in that as well. Yeah, it really is. And it's interesting that you said that because I was going, when you were telling all the stories and I was wanting to have a follow-up question to bring it back to the mindset specifically for entrepreneurs mm-hmm. who I'm speaking to in my audience are women entrepreneurs for the most part. Um, in saying in your experience working in this field, uh, what has been the biggest mindset issue? And I do want you to answer that, but I think mm-hmm. a lot of it really is, is people not understanding that it has to go together, especially with the part of not being satisfied. I feel like that is the hardest paradox to understand right, because right. it's not a dissatisfaction in terms of, I hate my life. It's, it's a dissatisfaction of, I want to challenge myself in, in, live my full potential, but still staying grateful, <laughs> which is so crazy yep. to think about, but I'll, I'll let you speak to that. <laughs> yeah. There's this great framing that I love. And, and I believe I got this from Esther Hicks, who's been a profound um, teacher of mine. Um, and uh, the, the, the statement goes, I'm grateful for where I'm at and eager for what's next. Mm. And, and I like that combination yeah. of this, this combination of gratitude for the now and eagerness, like eagerness mm. is a fun, great word. Cause it's like, yes. I'm on the leading edge. I'm eager for what's to come. I'm looking forward to what's to come, but I'm not like 
ignorant of where I'm at. So I like that combination, but I think to, to the bigger point of the biggest mindset issue around that to me, what I've personally found is it's belief, like belief in yourself. Yeah. Like period, full stop. Like you're someone that believes in yourself. And I've known that from the beginning. Right. And that's why you're still doing what you're doing is because you have a belief in what you're doing and you believe that you will figure it out and you believe in yourself. And I see so many, a lot of the entrepreneurs, the people who want to be entrepreneurs, Mm -hmm. they can only go as far as like, you can only go as far as you believe in yourself. And the world is just going to be a a reflection of what your most dominant belief is. So if you believe in yourself, you're going to get validation from that. And you're going to, the path is going to light up. It's not going to be easy all the time, but there's going to always be a path for you. But if you don't, then you're going to be challenged on that. So it's that seeing people like you got to believe, you got to buy, you got to believe that you actually can do this. You got to buy into something and buy into yourself and be like, Mm -hmm. yo, I got money on me. Like I would put money on me. Would you bet the house on yourself? That's what I feel about me. That's why I feel about my closest friends. Like Mm -hmm. I would put my, I got my money on this guy. I got my money on this girl. And you want to be able to say that to yourself. Like I got my money on me. Like I know that I can do this. And that, that to me is primary. Yes. Oh, that is so true. And and it really boils down to that. I saw, the other day, uh, somebody posted saying belief or self-belief or belief in yourself will trump any strategy because everyone's looking for the strategy and the methods, right? And those things are super helpful. Yes, we need to have some structure and some clear steps, (laughs) but it has to start just like what you said in belief in yourself. And I I wanted to add to that because, you know, hearing you say, you know, believe in yourself and through the years, through the last two years, I have been finding new layers of belief in myself. Mm. Um, And that's another important point because some people will start and not be, you know, the, the, the one entrepreneur is just like what you said, they're, they're in it for the long haul. And that really makes the difference. But that's not to say that you won't reach new levels of self-belief. Cause then I think the temptation is at least it has been for me to look back and say, why wasn't I doing that three years ago? Why didn't I start with this? Why did I you know, go around the mountain so many freaking times? And it's because there are these deeper or higher layers, however you want to call it. Totally. Of, yeah. Tell us about that. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. There's layers to it. I think it's like you go from somewhat believing to believing to knowing. And I think uh, knowing is like, mm. knowing is that top stage where you, yeah. it's just, it's just a fact. And, and this is the coolest part about this operating system and this mind that we have is that I was just watching this on, on Netflix. It's called human uh, inside the uh, inside the human world or something like that. A Netflix docu- docu-series. Yeah. Brilliant. The way that they visualize what goes on, our reflexes, our neurons firing. I just watched half of the first episode and I was like already blown away. And looking at the brain and how our neurons, how our neurons fire and create neural connections that actually create, they start as chemical reactions, but then actually form a physical hardware pathway. Yeah. And neuroplasticity shows us that we can create these pathways in our brain, which is the coolest thing, how we form a new habit, how we form a new belief. And, and so I always scale this down to like, what is a belief? A belief is a thought that you get really good at thinking mm-hmm. that you don't need to think anymore because you establish that neural connection, that neural pathway so strongly that you don't need to worry about it. You've paved the road. Yeah. You've like done the work to pave the road. Now the road is paved. Now cars can go free flying, mm-hmm. right? There's no issues. It's like the snow cat coming down, paving a, you know, a, a ski slope. Yeah. <laughs> the thought that it's there, the belief is the belief then becomes there because you don't need to worry about trudging it out every single day, shoveling out every single day. Cause it's mm-hmm. there. So, so we can, we can, we can create these beliefs. Like I didn't always look at the world the way that I look at it, not right. a shot, but I've put in the work to practice those thoughts Mm-hmm. enough times so many times and when the challenges come the opportunities to really put it to the test to pass those challenges and to yeah. be like okay cool here's the challenge here's the test like i'm going to choose to believe this and then seeing how it all connects it fortifies that and then that thought turns into the belief and then that belief after enough time of flexing that muscle and practicing that belief turns into knowing it turns into like you feel it in your bones there's no doubt Mm-hmm. It's like, it almost, it feels like it spreads that neural connection to the rest of your body and you feel it in your body, you feel it in your bones and your gut and your heart mm-hmm. that you just, you know, like you have no doubt. There's no, there's no, oh, like I want to believe this or maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not. There's just knowing. So it's like thought to belief to knowing yeah. is kind of the scale that I might put it at. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that so much. And the analogies, I think you painted the beautiful picture and I, I watched that same episode and I was just like blown away. Like right? we can literally Insane. create anything. It's just there for us. <laughs> It's it literally, it's so cool. And if, and here's the thing, if we're not doing it ourselves, then somebody else is doing it for us. Right. 
And right. that's the, that's the thing that's really important to remember, especially as entrepreneurs, especially yeah. starting entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. like your feed, your brain is getting filled with everything. So like, what are you choosing to tune into? What are you choosing to allow to program this? Like, what are you, what hard drive are you plugging the, you know, thumbnail are you plugging into your computer? What code are you running? So that's yeah. the way I think about it. Yeah. Which is operating operating systems through and through. That's it. Now you see why I'm an operations nerd. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that so much. Well, tell us more about the podcast and why you decided to go that direction, what you've been sharing and what kind of guests you got on. I'm super curious. Yeah, totally. Well, I love conversations like this. As you, if you can't tell, I'm pretty lit up right now. Um, and I always love, I, you know, I'm, I'm so curious to see how other people operate, right? Because that helps me. They're all data points to me that helps yeah. me write my code. And I take a lot from what I, I learned from everybody. Um, Ethics of our father says, who's a wise man? The one who learns from everyone. Mm -hmm. and so I love learning. I'm like a passionate student of life. Love learning from everybody, whoever it is. And I, I, I have enough of these conversations where I learn stuff and I'm like, oh man, this would be really valuable for other people to hear this conversation. Yeah. And I was tired of having enough of those conversations of like, dang, I wish this was recorded. But I was just, that I finally said, you know what? I'm going to start recording it. So that's how I was led to starting the podcast. Um, at this point right now, we're about 65, 70 episodes in, wow. um, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you've been at it for years as well. So it's, it's definitely a long-term play. It's a fun thing for me. Yeah. Uh, it's called Find the Others. And it's all about finding the other people, finding your tribe, finding those others that are going to be helping you pave your path and filling your head with the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And because it takes a team, success is a team sport, oh, yeah. especially as an entrepreneur. You need that team. You need that squad. You need those people around that believe in you. So even when you don't believe in yourself, because that's what will pull you forward. So um, it's all about finding those others, the others, as I call them, the people that are like open to more, seeing that they want to get the most out of life and, and open to exploring these things. So it's a different guest. I mean, it varies from CEOs of billion dollar companies to gold medal, uh, Olympic athletes, to professional athletes, to artists, to family members, to um, nurses, like anybody that I see as a, um, that plays at a high level in mm -hmm. their field, whatever that might be, like, those are the people that I have on the show. Like this person plays at a high level and whatever they do and the way they live their life, those, this is the spot for the others. Yes. And I've, and I've uh, heard some of them and I've been seeing the clips that you, sh that you show on Instagram and it's just amazing guests and amazing conversations. So you're doing awesome. a wonderful job. Love, Thank <laughs> Love you. hearing the story behind it. Awesome. Thanks. Well, um, let's get to our little rapid fire questions and then you can share a little bit more how to find you and uh, all that good stuff. But I'm super excited to see what you come up with. So I have five different stages to my framework and that's what I like to use for my rapid fire. Just whatever cool. comes to mind. It could be a word. It could be, you know, you can expand on it. Feel free. It's the time is yours and I'm super excited to hear what you have to say. So the first one is notice yourself. What comes to mind? Notice yourself here present. Awesome. The second one is listen to yourself. Mm. Uh, have more fun. Okay. I like that. The next one is forgive yourself. Mm. Uh, forgive myself for um, like, I've had a lot of injuries in the past. My body, like my body definitely keeps score. It's a great book called the body keeps score. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so I think forgiving myself for some of the past injuries, some of the past harmful injuries that I've had and I've gone through. Yeah, that's a big one. It comes with the territory of being so adventurous though. <laughs> it sure does. It sure does. <laughs> All right. The next one is empower yourself. Ooh. Um, empower myself. Uh, tune into my podcast. You're going to love it. There you go. You empower yourself when you're interviewing your guests and, and the right. listeners are being empowered too. And last but not least, transform yourself. Ooh, um, I'm going to have you on my podcast so I can learn and then use that information to transform myself. Ah, that's wonderful. I love that. <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much, Joshua. This was great. Tell us how to find you. So you're already yeah. to the podcast, but run us through everything in high impact coaching. Sure. As well. Yeah. So, um, best way to keep in touch with me is Instagram. Um, that's where I post the clips of the podcast, um, and just other different types of content, other frameworks and ideas and pictures from my different travels and journeys. So at Joshua Dean church on my Instagram and, uh, and then you can visit my website as well. www.joshuadeanchurch.com. Just my full name. You can see my full photo gallery, some of the other things that I'm up to and just a bit more about myself and background. Uh, that's the best way to stay in touch. There's also links to high impact coaching to check nice. that out too. So if you're a starting coach and, um, and are interested in this kind of mindset model of approach to 
really getting your coaching business started the right way. I mean, I've been there for four years now um, and since it basically started and uh, we just do such a good job. The coaches on the team just do such a great job of getting results, um, full stop. So uh, it's definitely great worth checking out. So you can check out all the links through there. Amazing. Well, thank you again so much. It's always a pleasure hearing from you. So So much wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. So fun to get to talk to Joshua. Super grateful for his leadership. Don't forget to connect with him. All of the links are in the show notes. Until next time. Bye.